World of Warcraft is a nefariously complex game, being easy to play but difficult to master. This is especially true when it comes to endgame content such as raiding environments, where the difficulty of the game is suddenly increases tremendously. Not only are you needing to perform the mechanics of the fight correctly, but you also need to coordinate with anywhere from 20 to 30 other players. These environments require you to be playing your class at an exceptional level, even if you're part of a larger team. As you get further into the raid, or when attempting harder difficulties, the level at which you need to play your character also directly increases. The increased requirement for the individual performance can be daunting, confusing, or at times overwhelming. But the first step towards getting better is determining where the opportunity exists to improve. This is where tools such as Warcraft logs will come into play. They provide a treasure trove of information to audit based on your past boss performances. That is what we'll be talking about today. Specifically, how to leverage Warcraft logs to self-audit performance and identify areas to grow in order to increase our overall ability to perform better as an individual. If you have been wanting to audit or even improve your own performance, but have been feeling a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of information to look at within Warcraft logs, then you've come to the right place, friend. Hey everyone, welcome in. My name is Rothmar, and my goal is to help make World of Warcraft more approachable for everyone. I've put a lot of time into this game, and I want others to enjoy it as well. This guide is part two in a series covering how to use Warcraft logs. The previous video in the series covers how to navigate the website as a whole, while this video will be an in-depth guide scoped to identifying opportunities for individual performance improvement, specifically within the Compare tool. We will be covering content such as how to use Compare as a whole, performing a real DPS performance comparison, including both an overall and opening audit, as well as looking at outlier and important pitfalls to be aware of when auditing. I will have a separate video covering how to audit top performers worldwide, so bear in mind that this video will be solely covering an individual raid log, such as what you'd expect after doing a regular raid night with your guild. Before we begin, the only requirement is to make sure that you have an existing log for your character to follow along with. You can also follow along even if you don't have one of these of your own, but it is highly recommended. That said, I'll be providing a visual guide through one of my own DPS audits if you just want to follow along in that way as well. In my opinion, the compare feature is the true bread and butter when it comes to self-improvement. It allows you to take an individual log and directly compare your performance against another player who did the same fight at a similar item level with the same fight direction, same raid size, and within the last few days. The content within a compare audit will heavily leverage everything that we talked about within the analyze section of the Warcraft logs as a whole, so be aware that this is not an automatic comparison being done. And if you need to know more information about how to look through Warcraft logs, you'll want to check out my previous guide, Getting Started with Warcraft Logs, which covers how to use the various tools within these views to get the information that we need. In order to use the compare feature, we'll open up Warcraft logs and pull up our log for the night. For example, this is our mythic Taros kill. From here, we'll want to head over to the compare tab in the upper right hand corner. Here, we'll be presented with three options. A manual compare option, a within report compare option, and a global parse compare option. For the most part, we'll likely want to always leverage the parse compare option, which is the third section at the bottom. The manual option is also good if you want to look at direct differences between another specific set of log data and the two players within the same report section or the second section is really good if you happen to have two copies of the same spec within a raid such as two arms warriors or two warlocks both playing affliction but they're on the same team and you want to know how they compare against each other barring those two exceptions I'd heavily recommend using the third option, the parse-based compare in nearly all scenarios for auditing performance. To use this feature, use the Select a Player dropdown and choose the player whose performance you want to analyze within the log. For example, let's check Rothgard. After this, you can adjust the settings below, altering the fight length discrepancy, the raid size, the item level range, the time range, and a specific metric such as DPS, healing, or survivability. The default here will be the role that the person is being audited for. So for example, I happen to be a DPS, so if I choose the default option, it will compare me against other DPS. Usually, I only adjust the time range section because it limits the search to parts that occurred within the last 28 days by default. 
If there was recently a major patch which changed how class performance operates, such as a rework to the way that my spec plays, I might drop it down to say the past 1, 2, 5, or 10 days instead, depending on when the patch dropped. But as long as there hasn't been any very recent changes to your class, it's safe to keep this at 28 days. Once selected, press search, and we'll then search for the top performances against other players with the defined thresholds that you set above. You can then see a list of each person's DPS, as well as their region, their eye level, the fight duration, and the total match percent. The higher this match percent, the better, where possible. But always be sure to look for the highest DPS done in order to gain the most insights to how to improve your performance as a whole. One side note quick is that you should be aware that logs use the language for where they were recorded in. So if we do have results from another language or another region, you might need to do additional work to cleave the same information from these logs. There's still valuable information in them, but just be aware that there can be a language barrier that exists at times. In order to begin the comparison, click on the top player's name within the highest DPS done. Interestingly enough, this will take us back to the Analyze tab, but with two logs stacked next to each other for a side-by-side -side comparison on the left and right hand side. This will allow us to compare the differences between these two logs in a moment-by-moment -moment basis and ability-by-ability -ability basis. All of the various sections that we talked about within the Analyze section of this guide will apply to this compare analysis from this point moving forward, allowing you to do things such as compare talents, Compare damage done, compare damage taken, and even go so far as to allow us to see moment by moment casts as time progresses. Let's take a look at a real comparison using one of my personal parses. I have a log here from our mythic Taros kill, which is a single target fight with very light movement throughout. Theoretically, it should have uniform cooldown timings and 100% uptime on the boss. By default, it'll return us back to the Analyze tab and the Damage Done section. At a glance at the visual graph at the top, I can already notice a few key importance about our performance. Most notably, they had a much larger initial burst, I'm shown here in blue while they're shown here in purple, as well as a higher rough DPS average towards the last part of the fight here. We can then scroll down to see how our damage breakdowns compare. If we look at the rough order of the spells from the top to the bottom, they should mostly align. In this case, our top abilities are roughly the same, but the spells are individually hitting harder than mine did. For example, our top three spells are both Mortal Strike, Execute, and Overpower. However, their Mortal Strike was cast about seven more times than mine did, and crit 8% more frequently. That means that it did an average DPS of about 4,000 damage more than I did. To me, this stands out as an opportunity for me to keep in the back of my mind that I need to probably prioritize Mortal Strike more. I also see that they had 22 more Execute casts than me, for another 4,000 DPS more than I did. This means that between the two spells, I'm now 8,000 DPS behind them, and looking at the meters at the bottom, where we can see 8,100 for me and 9,000 for them, 8k pretty much makes up the entirety of the difference between these two parses. We can also check major cooldowns against each other by going to the Cast tab. If we scroll down here, we can see that we cast Colossus Smash, Avatar, and Thunderous Roar the same amount of times. Also, I got a third puzzle box cast off while they only did two. We'll look into this more shortly further into this guide. As a note, I can also see that they have more exhilarating blows results than I do. This is a talent which gives Mortal Strike a small random chance to reset its own cooldown when it's used. This is important to note because while I had 7 less casts of Mortal Strike, I also had 8 less procs of a Mortal Strike reset. This means I was likely casting Mortal Strike as often as I could, but I essentially lost out on about 4000 DPS difference due to bad RNG, which is completely out of my control. As far as takeaways go from this, I see that I need to do more work in my opener so that I have a larger burst window, as seen from the damage done filter earlier, and I can see that I need to focus on my execute more, as seen throughout my damage done and cast count. I can see that I need to get luckier with some of my RNG resets for my main damaging ability as well, but that one's not quite in my control. And while I don't have control over this third point, at least the first two things are things that I do have control over. So let's identify how to do this. Let's look at my opening burst window. To do this, we're going to return to the damage done filter. 
we can see that our damage becomes roughly similar to each other around the 30 second mark or so. So let's scope the comparison within this graph to look at the first 30 seconds of this fight to see what our differences are. We can click and drag on the graph itself to scope to the data of just that first portion of this fight. So we'll go ahead and find the beginning, we'll click, we'll drag to about the first 30 seconds. Looking below the graph at the damage done chart, we can get a rough idea of the differences here. Notably, they were able to get two more Mortal Strike casts off than me, with each of them hitting on average about 30k harder. Their Thunderous Roar also did about 8,000 more DPS than mine did, and they got four Sudden Death Execute procs, which I did not get. This is a good bird's eye view, but we can take this a step further and look at the cast sequence done on a moment by moment basis by viewing the cast filter up at the top, and then changing our view away from tables to timelines. If we scroll down, we can view both mine and this other parser simultaneously next to each other while scrolling horizontally with both of these together. Here, we can see that we both used our puzzle box pre-poll, then charged in and had different opening abilities. In mine, I charged, avatar, colossus smashed, ignore pain, and then I went into my main rotation. While I was in theirs, they did a charge, mortal strike, colossus smash, avatar, thunderous roar, and t-clap. You'll notice that my thunderous roar does not happen for some time. This is because I used mine in what's called the test of might window, which apparently was not worth it. As a note, in my head, I deep down know that neither of these openers is actually optimal based on the feedback from class discords and other information. So even though this person did way more damage than I did, I know deep down that neither of us quite did this correctly and both have room for improvement. The second item that I wanted to investigate is my execute usage throughout the fight. I had 22 less executes cast throughout this fight. And in order to determine the differences here, I can look at the casts and I can look at the timelines to see when execute was cast for both of us and identify where I fell short. We can do this by going to the casts and timeline section, which we're at already, and then I can click on execute to see just the execute cast here. I happened to not cast any in my opening 30 seconds, it looks like. As we scroll through the timeline, we can see that this other player was able to constantly cast execute throughout the entire fight. We can in fact reset the zoom away from the 30 seconds. So as we scroll through here, we're seeing that they're consistently casting it on the boss throughout the entire fight, well as I must have just been ignoring it. Our first cast isn't until nearly three minutes in. Once we both hit execute phase, we can see that we both start rapidly executing. So I had the ability, I just wasn't using it in the opening part of this fight. So how was this other player using execute so frequently earlier in the fight? In my head, I know that the only way for this to occur is through a talent named Sudden Death, which gives us a free execute regardless of the boss health. So let's pivot to actually prove this. If we come up here and we look at buffs and we change our view back to, well, let's stay on timelines actually. we can. Scroll through here and look for a buff named Sudden Death. And if we click on this, we'll see when we gained the Sudden Death proc across both of us. Throughout this, we can kind of see how many procs we get. So if I just scroll through here, I see that I am getting some procs, but I'm not using them. We could scroll through these and find every single instances, or we can just return up here to the tables view. We can see here that I got 13 procs of Sudden Death, while they got 22. Now, the interesting difference here is that you can't gain a Sudden Death proc if you already have it. So if they are gaining this proc and then turning around and using the proc, it frees them up to gain more of it. I wasn't using my Sudden Death procs appropriately, so there's likely procs in here that I would have gotten within the duration that it existed on my character, but since I didn't remove it, I couldn't regain it, which would likely explain the massive difference here between the amount of procs that we got. Every spec will have different information that they need to identify, but I hope that this provides at least some idea or some context around how it might be performed. Taking things at face value, such as how they happen to cast more mortal strikes than I did, is only half of the picture since that's largely random based on if mortal strike resets its own cooldown. Or, while execute is also RNG while being able to use it at high health, I did genuinely mess up by not casting execute when it was available to me. These are two separate examples of RNG, but with different levels of player control and responsibility at play here. On one hand, yes, I couldn't have cast more Mortal Strike. On the other hand, I absolutely could have cast more Executes. 
Now that we've covered how to audit a class and its overall performance and its openers, the major cooldown uses, and even some potential pitfalls, I would encourage that each of you go and attempt to audit one of your own logs and look for even a single area of improvement that you can find. This is a very iterative process, and I personally find it best to look for one single item to improve on and then fold that improvement into my next boss attempt. Once that new improvement has become habitualized, I can re-audit and look for one more area of improvement. Slow, iterative, but consistent improvement is the key to long-term success without feeling overwhelmed and while also enforcing positive performance. Remember to be patient and to keep doing your best. Don't get mad, just get better. I hope that this video has helped to outline some of the key areas to audit when it comes to identifying areas for personal improvement. Using direct data and comparing against other similar players can directly illustrate opportunities while avoiding pitfalls of things like self-doubt. If this guide helped you to improve your performance by even a single DPS or HPS for my healing friends, be sure to leave a like on the video so that others can find it as well. If you enjoyed this guide but wished I would cover a different topic that you've been yearning to learn more about, please let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you want to see more in-depth guides from me in the future, be sure to leave a subscribe as well. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, please remember to play safe and be nice to the fellow players out there.